Let's imagine a scenario. You open your laptop, you check one message and then another, a ping from Slack, a new email and then a random text. And you tell yourself that you'll just get this one out of the way and suddenly it's noon. You've been busy all morning but have not done anything that feels meaningful or productive. We live in an age where every minute competes for our attention. But what if the simple act of protecting our morning hours could rewire our brain, making us calmer, clearer and more creative? And today in this video, we'll try to uncover what neuroscience says about interruptions, attentions and why our brain loves the early morning silence. In 2008, Cognitive scientist Gloria Mark and her colleagues wanted to study something we all live with, interruptions. They recreated a full office environment in a lab. 48 participants played the role of an HR manager and their mission was to answer all emails quickly, politely and correctly. But there was a catch. Every two minutes, their supervisor interrupted them. Sometimes with related questions like how many employees are in your department and sometimes with random questions like how many hot dogs do we need for a company party. Some interruptions came through phone calls and other through instant messages. Everything was timed, recorded and analyzed. The team wanted to know does the context of the interruptions also matter? Does it help or hurt our brain's ability to focus? And the results were pretty shocking. People who were constantly interrupted actually finished their work faster than those who were not interrupted at all. But the hidden cost of this interruption and faster work was enormous. Stress, frustration, mental workload and time pressure skyrocketed for the participants who were able to finish their work faster. Even though they were done sooner, their minds were tense and their hearts were racing. They compensated for the interruptions by working faster, a kind of cognitive sprint mode. Emails got shorter, language less polite and thoughtfulness was replaced by speed. Gloria Mark called this the paradox of modern work. Interrupted work may be done faster but at a price. And every time we are interrupted, our brain triggers an ancient orienting response, the same reflex that once helped our ancestors to survive in the wild. A sudden sound or notification says, pay attention, something might be important here. But you see, the problem here is that our phone is not a predator or a tiger, but our brain doesn't know that. Each ping floods our system with dopamine and cortisol, forcing our attention to shift. And when we switch back to our main task, our prefrontal cortex that handles reasoning and decision making needs time to reload context. And that's why even small interruptions can feel mentally expensive. And over time, this rewires our brain to crave novelty over depth. We start seeking micro rewards, quick checks and short bursts of dopamine and lose our capability for deep sustained focus. Now let's contrast this with the morning hour. When we wake up, our brain's neural noise is low, our prefrontal cortex is fresh and our default mode network which is responsible for daydreaming and insight is quietly active and our cortisol levels are at its natural healthy peak helping us to feel alert and ready. This is our brain's prime time for deep unbroken focus. Mark's team also studied personality in this experiment and they found that two traits mattered the most. The first First one was openness to experience and the second one was need for personal structure. People with high openness were more curious, had adaptive minds and recovered faster from interruptions. Surprisingly, those who liked structure also handled chaos well, possibly because they managed their time more deliberately. And this tells us something profound. It's not just about avoiding interruptions. It's also about training our brain to recognize when to protect focus and when to release it. Morning routines such as journaling, meditation, mindful work or breath work build exactly that kind of structure which is flexible yet balanced. Let's think of our brain as a muscle shaped by repetition and let's imagine two different scenarios here. Scenario one is morning A where you start your mornings early, no notifications, 
you read, you write, and you simply think before you consume anything else. Your brain learns that it can go deep and build a habit of focusing for longer hours. And scenario two is morning B, where you wake up scrolling, checking, and replying to different texts and emails. And in this scenario, your brain learns that attention is cheap, fleeting, and scattered. You can try this experiment by yourself by repeating each pattern for a few weeks, and you literally see that you sculpted two different brains here. One that thrives in silence and the other that survives in noise. Of course, not all interruptions are harmful. Quick social breaks or laughter can reset our attention and reduce fatigue. And then the key here is intentional interruptions. Choosing when our brain can wander and when it should stay still. And morning hours give us that power naturally. Before the world chooses for us, we choose what we want to do for ourselves. And Gloria Marks research wasn't just about emails, it was also about our relationship with attention. Every interruption fragments not just our task but also our sense of self. In each moment of silence, we protect a moment of reintegration. So why not wake up early and see if that makes any significant change in your life. And we can make our mornings our mind sanctuary by building habits like writing before we scroll, thinking before we check any socials or mails because those quiet hours are not empty, they are restorative. And our attention is not just about how we work, it's also about how we live our life, one uninterrupted moment at a time. If you have continued watching this video till now and you are not a subscriber, please subscribe the channel and do let me know what you liked about this video and I'll see you in my next one.